All right, so we uh, just got a pallet. It's the most cubes I've ever got. It's hard to it's hard to do that. <clears throat> to be honest with you, it's a uh, it's a uh, hard hard to swallow this bill when you get 40 bags. Cause you get a pallet, you get 10 cents off a bag. 10 cents off, guys. Um, I think these bags normally are 10.90. I think so. I got them for 10.80 if you get a pallet, which is 40 bags. So save some money today, guys. We saved a lot of money. But uh, got some calf manna that I put uh, in the horses' feed. Um, other than that, got rebar for the Ponderosa barn here. All the work that's going on in it. Very excited for where that's going. That goes down for the concrete. And we're pouring these uh, slabs like 20 by 20, 20 by 40s at a time. We've almost got the barn completely done uh, as far as pouring slab in it. So that's what this rebar is for. And uh, we're gonna have to chain this up, pull it back. I had them put it up here in the front on the axle weight, for the axle weight. And uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna have to pull it back because the pallet forks can't reach that far um, with some chain pull it back and then we'll be able to scoop it up and put it in the barn. We got the pallet in here, put it right here. This is the way I can pull my truck up here and load it uh, for Kevin or me, uh, depending on where we want it. But that is a pallet. Don't fall off, Charlie. Oh, that's a thousand pounds of feed right there. And so what I'm gonna do now is, I really wanna figure out how many pounds of cubes I'm putting out. And these are 14%, it says creeper, pellet. It's just a range cube is all it is. And uh, I typically give the yearlings um four bags about three or four bags a week um so four out of seven days um so i'll give them hay one day and then the next day i'll rotate with cubes and then the next day uh, they pretty much gone through a bale of hay by then sometimes it just depends on um what they're doing and then uh i'll give them hay and then the next day kind of so i kind of rotate that back and forth um with these cubes and how I feed my yearlings. So the reason I feed the yearlings so many cubes, uh, you know, so that's if you do 50 pound bags and there's 22 of them, you know, you get 22. Uh, or you, there's actually only 20 of them in there right now because I have Haas up here. If you do 20 uh, divided by a 50 pound sack, 
you know, so you're looking at a little over two pounds uh, per animal uh, of, of eating uh, that they're getting in a feeding session. And so they can get at least two pounds of this a day. They're still eating hay. They're still grazing whatever they can graze right now. Um, so that's what we're looking at with the yearlings. And I feed them, I feed them that right now because that, that two pound intake a day is nice um, for uh, younger animals. Now the adults, they don't have to have that as much. But the big Joe herd, they're in a they're in a bigger space. So uh, they're in like a 40 acre part. So there's some winter grasses that are coming up because of the moisture we've had. And so they've been grazing more. Uh, and then they're eating hay. And then I give them cubes. I give them maybe about two to three sacks a week. And there's only a dozen dolts in that. Um, and so every time when I feed them a 50 pound bag, they're getting more intake because there's less animals. So you, you got 12 animals and you do a 50 pound sack, you know, you've got, um, you've got almost four pounds ahead now. And so that's when I kind of scatter them out and give them less cubes to the big Joe herd. Um, I really want to make sure that these yearlings are getting uh, the, the nutrition that they need before, um, you know, summer hits, the green grass starts to show up. Of course, they'll get to grazing. Uh, but the important part is that we want them to be prime healthy whenever the uh, July hits, basically, and that they're coming in heat um, during breeding season. Uh, we want them to be full. We want them to be healthy because uh, this will be their first breeding go around. And we want all, I think there's 22 of those yearling heifers. We want all 22 bred is what we want. That's the ideal. And the bulls, we want the bulls to be in good shape too. So that's kind of our feeding program and what I've been doing mostly this entire winter time is lots of hay and lots of this. I destroyed this hay bale, so don't judge me. This is the way they typically look right here. I kind of knocked it, I brushed it with my skid steer, so I kind of tore it up and Charlie makes a good bed out of it. So that's kind of our feeding program. A lot of this back and forth right here. That's what, that's how we do it. Every place is different. It, you know, all across the country, depends on where you are, uh, how much, uh, you know, you want to put into it. You know, you, this costs money, right? That right there, like I said, $10.80 10, $10 a sack. When I first started raising bison, I think I got that for $7.25 a sack. And since COVID started, it's gone up to $10.80 if you get a pallet. And uh, so it's gone up a lot, but they have to have that. There's no grazing right now. There's not a lot of grazing. There is a little bit, but there's not a lot of grazing. They got to have roughage, which is your hay, and they have to have um, cubes. You know, they got to have some supplement. And uh, I put protein tubs out every now and then too to help them uh, as well. So uh, I want them to be the healthiest they can be and uh, so that they can grow to their full potential and uh, be awesome producers and uh, great animals so that they can graze and do their natural thing. So, uh, but someday those yearling heifers right now that are about to be two, that's our concentrated breeding stock along with the females with Big Joe. So we really um, try to f hone in on that and uh, we wanna put some effort into those uh, breeding stock animals and plus the other five with Dunbar over there. So that's kind of how we do things. There's Betty, Betty with the crew here. Hatchlings. Oh, that one's got born yesterday and overnight. Little bitty.
I may have a slight late obsession here and uh, I'm just gonna blame it on Brooks. But So we had some babies hatch, okay? We had uh, three out of 12 on our latest incubation around hatch. All right, let's get them out. I gotta hope that the others hatch too. Okay. Okay, can you get them? Okay, slowly put her down in the box. Grab the other one. Good job. Can you grab that eggshell? Uh, yes. Yeah. Now we're gonna throw it away. Okay, we hope that the others hatch. Yeah. Good hatch. Okay, that's sealed up. Oh, she did. Here you go. Thank you. Good job. Not very good rate, um, and, and that happens, whatever. No big deal, not, not an issue. Um, we're gonna try again, right? So I'm like, okay, well, if we've got three babies that you gotta take care of, you gotta feed, you gotta water, why not get some more? So, went to Tractor Supply, waited there for like 45 minutes, because when I got the Tractor Supply, I wasn't going in there for chicks, I was going in there for something else, because we're doing all this construction on the uh, cabin, or on the uh, barn. So I was like, okay, um, I saw them come in. I waited like 45 minutes for them to separate them and put their signs up and put their waters in there and whatnot. And then finally was able to buy them. And I got 20. I got two different sets. I'm going to tell you the name of them here uh, of what kind they are. I'm, right now I can't think of it. Oh, I got some Rhode Island Reds and something else. I'm not, I'm not great with uh, chicken breeds, but I'm getting better. And I say I'm getting better because I went to Tractor Supply again today. And uh, just, you know, hear the beeping when you walk in. And so I had to go look. And um, there were some new breeds, some new chicks. And uh, I walked out with 10, only 10 this time. But I did walk out with some. And um, let's take a look at them right here and see what we got. Oh boy. Oh boy, these are creative. Um, Marissa is gonna be super, super excited because she's always wanted something different. And uh, I got a mol molted Houdan, is that right? Molted Houdan and some wine dots. So that's what, that's what these guys right here are. And we're gonna set them down in here because you're supposed to let them acclimate uh, slowly to their new environment, the warmth, the the warmth and all that. So I'm gonna keep them in the box for a second. They've been in my truck traveling around, riding around with the bison guy. So um, we're gonna let them chill there for just a little bit, and then I'm gonna release them with the other 30 <laughs> that are in here. Is there 30? There's not 30. It's not three, there's 23, because we had another chick last night, brought her over. So we've only got three that hatched, like I said, out of the 12 in their recent incubator that Brooks uh, got for Christmas, which is our our other chicks, they're, they're getting big now. And uh, she was nine for 12 there. This round was only three for 12. And so we've got 23 in there and then we're about to add 10. So we're gonna have 33 babies. Um, uh, basically is what we're gonna have in there, so. Becoming a chicken guy, too. Hello. Oh, he just ran in there. That's what was in there. Come on, you little guys. Like, I don't want to get out of there. There's the one I was born last night. Looks like a Looks like a game hen. Look at them. They're like, oh, yeah, this is fun. <clears throat> we got a house now. I'm sure Brooks would like that. There you guys go. They're all bundled up. Don't want to get out. I'm chasing a fly. You guys got a new home? Here, let me turn it so you can get access to the water. Oh, they're coming out. Oh, yeah. Go 
blown out. Look like a bunch of little minions. Got some food for you here. Water. Gonna have some fun today. Mark, my buddy's coming over. He's a, uh, we've been doing this for about, oh, once every week at least uh, now. I think we skipped one week, but um, other than that, Mark's gonna, Mark has been taking some time out of his a week, work week, away from his uh, family to come over here and hang out with me and Cora and, uh, you know, Jackie and Maya and Charlie and sometimes Brooks and Marissa here about, uh, I'm gonna get our girl caught here, put the uh, put the halter on her, and we're gonna do a little bit of work today. I'm gonna see what and who I've been learning from and uh, see what we can get done today. She's been doing really good. I've been working with her a little bit here and there on my own um, in the mornings before I feed her. So that's kind of how we've been doing it. But um, Mark, uh, every time that we come, Mark just, we do something a little bit different and we just trying to advance every time. So she's been getting used to me and uh, letting me love up on her and very, getting getting really comfortable with me. And that has helped me a bunch and helped me get comfortable with her. So what do you think, girl? You ready? First thing we do is we'll walk up here, let her smell of it. And uh, last time I was able to put the halter on her and not have to run her down the alley. Um, I was able to just go up to her, love on her, and put this on her. So hopefully we're able to do that right now. Let's get it started. You feeling frisky or what? It's all right. Go. Okay. <laughs> you feeling your oats? Good girl, Cora. Oh, no, wanting to run. Whoa! <laughs> Jeez, girl. She's wanting to run. It's thirsty now. Got herself all worked up. Feeling good? This is where some of the attitude comes in. Okay. Oh. You're not happy? Let me smell it. It's not gonna hurt you. You just don't feel like it today, huh? Just wanna run. Alright, fair enough. Well, I managed to get it on, but I couldn't hold the phone and put it on at the same time, guys. Sorry, sorry. But we got it. We got it on. We're we're rocking and rolling now. You've already got a sweat even before we started working. Shedding lots of hair. Mark's not even here yet. He's big and louder than me. <laughs> Cold and raining.
This is another tool that you use. Really, you see me so good. Well, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. How heavy is it? How heavy is it? They get real heavy when they don't want you to pet them. <laughs> you gotta walk them around and see the rubbing on it. That's good. That's that's not threatening. She's sticking her nose in it. That's really good. Yeah, she's like, you're not gonna hurt me with that thing. Yeah. Take it to her neck, to her shoulder, and rub her with it. Yeah. Kind of see how far you can go until she. Yeah, until she's like, I don't want to feel. And then you start your whole approach and retreat, approach and retreat with with your pad. You can't really do anything wrong besides just throw it at her and yeah. you know make it to where it's going to something that scares her. But she's locking it. Yeah. Yeah, good. You did good on your hand right there. Like you didn't let her brace on you. See, she's licking her lips to take it off of her. You can start pecking on her like this, like this. Because ideally you want to get to like when you threw that rope over her neck, this is right when I first got here, you just tossed the rope over her neck. Yeah. She'll be as accepting of that pad as she was you flipping that rope right. over her neck. And it needs to be on both sides. So like when she'll start doing that, that's when I'll start working that pad and get it on her back. You're good. Just stay right there. It's hard to do it one hand. Yeah, yeah. Rubbing it on her. Yeah, just working it over her back. Yeah. Just hold it there now. Hold it there. And it, there, she stopped moving. Pull it off of her. Yeah. First spot, you had it almost over her back. There you go. That's good. Now hold her there. Just hold her there. Just hold her there. Now pull it off. Good girl. So, like, no harm, no foul. But. You, you put all that pressure on her, and then she settled down. Yeah, and just slide it up there, yep. And then rub it around, let, like make it pet her back. That's, that's her getting pet for being a good girl. All right, and then just slide it down, grab it by that handle up there, that hole, and slide it right down to your hip. Yep, just like that. That's good. Next yeah. yeah, next week. We're riding you. Who said you can't ride a nine month old baby? Yeah. <laughs> this 180 yeah, hour. yeah. So let's just let's just get to ride her. Get her good and broke before she's two. Yeah. There you go. Good. Good. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. It hung up. She's fine. Keep her right there. Keep her right there. And then when she settles, pull it off. When she settles, pull it off. Yeah. It's hard to grab her mane too. Yeah. Good. Hey. Yeah. All right. Go right back to it. Oh, all right, you're good. Try again. Shorten it. There you go. I take it off and throw it on that side one more time. From that side, throw it on her one more time. From is, that side. Is it okay to me to just throw it on her like it's not? If she's gonna like stand it. still like that, yeah. Because like I said, the worst thing that can happen is that fall off. Gotcha. That's bad. If that falls off and spooks her, that's bad. Go back to well, because it just yeah, you're you're what you're doing is you're trying to reinforce that everything I'm doing to you is not gonna hurt you or scare you. So. So ideally, that's why it's just kind of important to have her where you can, you've got her flex, she knows to stand still. There you go, now slide it up there and get it on. Good. And I like that she, with you over there and her not even liking that side, she was not ever thinking about like, you're gonna hurt her, you yeah. know. She was just more or less, I don't like this, you know. She is sexy. Yeah, she's, yeah. That'll be the main problem we'll have with her is, she's gonna be too gentle and too yeah. on you. You know, but I'd rather terrible, I'd rather have to push one off of me than, than sit here and be like, come on, we can be friends, we can be friends, you know, let's let's work this thing together.
the bison taken care of. Had fun with Mark coming over and working, even though it started raining and it got a little cold. We got some production done with our uh, buckskin filly, Cora. Yeah, it's been fun working with her and, and having Mark come over. I really appreciate his help. Having uh, a, you know a good friend like Mark, and we became closer. You know, like we grew up together and played high school football together and all that. He's a year younger than me, and so kind of fun to bring back an old friend and uh, you know hang out again and and whatnot. But it's nice to have somebody very knowledgeable uh, to actually physically come out here and show me some things. And so I appreciate Mark coming out here and um, and hanging out with me and. And, uh, and the bison too. We're gonna have to get Mark out here with some horses at some point. And we're gonna go riding around and stuff, hopefully, and uh, someday. But um, uh, she been, it was able to get the uh, saddle pad on her, which is uh, fun and exciting. Someday um, we'll have to get her own. But Mark brought his saddle pad over just uh, for us to train her, and she's uh, leaps ahead than when I where I thought she was gonna be. So um, very excited to show you what's going on in this corner of the barn, guys. You'll be able to see here pretty soon what's been going on inside this barn and uh, what we're doing in it. You know, we'll eventually tell you guys uh, what the idea is and what we're going to bring to you. Next week, we're excited. We've got an upcoming event. We are headed to Springfield, Missouri, Marissa and Brooks and I, and um, we're going to take some bison for a friend up there looking to buy some, buy some animals. Uh, I'm not going to sell anything. Actually, I've kind of pulled back on that. We're gonna go up there. We're gonna go up Friday night. Gotta take the animals and we're gonna leave early, early Friday morning. Get up there and uh, then we're gonna drop the animals off, get them handled and worked, and they'll uh, sort them there at the facility. And then Saturday is the sale. So we're gonna bring you along on that as well. So, uh, so you get a little backstory, a little uh, behind the scenes of what it's like. Uh, taking animals to a sale or being a part of a sale like I've done before. So thank you guys for watching us. We'll see you guys soon